Talking about erectile dysfunction isn't easy. Most brush it off or blame themselves saying things like, I lost my mojo. Or people make excuses like, I had a long day at work. Sorry, honey. Or I'm just not feeling it. Guys, with Roman, it's easy to talk about. With a real healthcare professional who can help prescribe real medication, it's simple, safe, and totally discreet. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. A healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, Roman will ship it to you with free two-day shipping. The whole process is straightforward, simple, and discreet. Getting started is simple. Just go to GetRoman.com slash Chael and complete an online visit. You'll get $15 off your first order of ED treatment. Breaking down Oliveira and Tony Ferguson, is a little bit more complicated than a lot of fights. Look, so many times in this sport, like all the time in this sport, we always reflect back to the guy's last fight. And there's an expression that's been around since the sport's been around in the 90s that you are only as good as your last fight. That is just going to be the public's perception, the only way you feel about yourself. Or am I, am I going to be on a high about myself or I'm going to be a little down about myself? It all has to do with your last match. And these two guys, Oliver and Tony Ferguson, had drastically different last matches. I just don't know how true that expression, you're only as good as your last fight, actually is. I'm aware of the phenomenon and I'm aware that that expression is still around. But I don't. So Oliver has won seven in a row, bringing you guys up to speed on him. Tony Ferg just lost. But Tony Ferg also lost a world championship fight a five-round, long, drawn-out war against Justin Gaethje, of which was an upset, by the way. Ferguson was a two-and-a-half-to-one favorite going into that fight. That didn't wasn't just a commentary at the time on Ferguson's skills versus Gaethje's or perception thereof. It was also because Gaethje had taken the fight on very short notice. You guys will remember, it was like, Gaethje took that fight on 11 days' notice. Now, I understand that show then ended up getting moved three weeks. So 11 days notice all of a sudden turns into about a, you know, 30 days notice, and it's not as much of a talking point, but I'm just trying to remind you of that time frame because that fight still was a surprise. And I don't know that anybody was more surprised that night than Justin Gaethje. I could see it on Justin's face. I could see as he started to build momentum is that snowball started to gain size. I could see where he then started to get in the rhythm. He started to find where I want to fight Tony and how I want to fight Tony. And then he was able to go out and duplicate that for the process of the evening, what's constituted just under five rounds. Now, I bring that to you only because if you want to look at last fights and you're only looking at outcome, I feel that there's you're, you're going to miss a big part of the story. Who you're fighting, where you're fighting on the card, don't forget, Tony had weighed in two weeks before the fight because he was supposed to be weighing in for the original 249, so he saw the weigh-in through. He saw the training camp through time and time again. It wasn't even supposed to be Gaethje. It was supposed to be Khabib. There was a lot of moving parts, which brings me to my final conclusion of that night, which is Tony was tired. I felt as though that's what my eyes were showing me. They were showing me a guy who was tired who was dealing with a level of fatigue. I'm not talking about his cardio wasn't on point. I'm not talking about he was starting to wilt in the contest because Gaethje had come in with a fuller gas tank. Talk about he was tired. He was physically tired. He was mentally tired. He was drained and you could see it. And I felt as though Tony was trying to push through and he was trying to persevere that Tony showed a lot more positive attributes than he did negative. But I think that what I saw was an athlete who was tired. I have to be very careful because the athlete that I am describing that my eyes saw as tired, physically and mentally, was showing the same signs of an athlete who has now lost the battle to father time. That is largely what slowing down is for an older athlete. I just don't think that's what happened in Tony's case. I think there was just, there was just too many bricks. Too many bricks had stacked up against him. I think that it just slowed him down a little bit, but that speed is very important because the speed of a match, when you've got to consolidate into a three-round atmosphere versus a five-round atmosphere, 
And so many times we've seen an athlete, and now I'm talking about Oliveira. So many times we have seen an athlete who's done everything right and belongs. He belongs in there with the best in the world. He belongs in there in a main event. He belongs in there in a marquee matchup. But the pressures of that get to him. He questions himself. He walking out at the very end of the night, whether he's A side or B side, when you're closing the show and so many greats have come before you and you start to question, am I worthy and do I belong? We've seen that bite a guy in the ass. And we've seen him wilt a little bit to it. And then he comes back stronger than ever. He goes, oh my, this was all mental. I, I didn't realize the match is the same. My job is to go out and do the same thing. The environment changed. The environment got to me. Give me another shot. I was immature. Very real thing. And we see it all the time where guys bounce back. I, I'm submitting this for you because Oliver is in a very unique spot in that he's fighting a top guy in the world. This is as close to a number one contender's fight as he's ever been part of. He is going to have more eyeballs and attention on him. He's going to do more media but he's not going to have to deal with the pressures of being the main event. He's not going to have to deal with the pressures of the doubts of, can I hold up for 25 minutes? He got all of the positives of a big fight without the one negative, which is all the heat is on you. The marquee, the numbers, do you move the needle for the worldwide leader or don't you aren't going to be questions that he's asked. It's a very unique spot. And anytime you're asked to do something different than what you're used to doing, things are going to change for you, not only mentally, but physically. Tony is being asked to do something easier than what he's used to doing. Closing out the night is harder. The press and the buildup in the media is harder. Fighting five rounds is harder than doing what's asked of him, but it's different nonetheless, which means Tony is going to have to deal with that, strategically speaking, all the same. Tony has X amount of punches he was going to throw if that was a five-round fight. He needs to throw those same amount of punches, but he needs to do it in 15 minutes. Many people have said that Tony Ferguson is a slow starter. I don't know that I see that. I don't know that I see Tony starting slow as much as I see a guy that, that really can push harder later. And it may sound like we're saying the same thing with different words, but it's not the same. Either way, Tony does not have a round to kill. And we have seen him do that. We saw him do that with Anthony Pettis. Even if Tony won the round, we saw him killing a round. We saw him do that with Cowboy Cerrone. Even if Tony won the round, we saw him throwing minutes away, throwing exchanges away, getting himself antiquated. He just simply can't do that. That's not the world's biggest strategy and hurdle to have to overcome. He can do that mentally if he's aware of this. If he can acknowledge, I don't have time to waste. It's a three-round fight. I got to win two, which means my opponent's thinking the same thing. And my opponent is likely going to try to grab the first two. Can't let him do it. If Tony can be very disciplined in this fight and just win the first round, he will win the fight. It's the first round that can cost him. It's the first round. If there is anything to the narrative that he's a slow starter, that's where you're going to find out. If there is any kind of a natural questioning that Tony's having of himself now because of his fight with Gaethje, that's the round where you're going to find out. I would submit for you that strategically speaking and getting yourself mentally ready, and Tony's as strong as anybody when it comes to the mental side of it, but if, strategically speaking, he can really slow this fight down, not make it about 15 minutes, not make it about run, rounds one, two, and three, make it about five minutes, make it about round one. If he can just go out and commit and promise to himself that he's going to win the first round and does, I submit for you, Tony Ferguson wins the fight. 